Good morning. Today we want to see the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four. Second Corinthians four from verse one to six. I will read. <coughs> second Second Corinthians chapter four from verse one to six. Second. I will read Second Corinthians chapter four from verse one to six. I will read. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced the secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is failed, it is failed to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach, for what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, "Let light shine out of darkness," made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. Amen. So today we want to meditate this the book of Second Second Corinthians chapter four. Uh, it's talking about uh, the new life in 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 God, and also the 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 light, the light, the new life of light in in Christ Jesus. Mm. So, mm. through this, then we want to really meditate about our life of faith. How is our life of faith? We have two aspects for our life of faith. So one is uh, <clears throat> our life of faith can be how is the life of Jesus? The life of Jesus, eh, our life of faith, if we follow the life of Jesus, then we can be similar to, we can live the similar life to Jesus' life. Then how was Jesus' life? Eh, Jesus' life was, eh, he was really sacrificing. Or in other words, full of persecutions following, full of sacrifice, persecution, uh, suffering a lot. Yeah, the life of Jesus was yeah, suffering a lot, sacrificing, <coughs> could not <coughs> rest well. And then he was <coughs> also very tired to take care of many people, to, to guide many people, to teach the word of God every day even to heal many sick people. Yeah. Even he was fighting against the evil spirit in the, in the inside of the people. So the life of Jesus was really suffering a lot. Uh. But then, through this life of Jesus then, uh, 
he could fulfill the great will of God to save this world, to save the, the sinners in this world. And then, until, until the great sufferings, the great sacrifice of Jesus Christ, until his death on the cross, and it was great suffering. But then through that, yeah, the great door of salvation of this world could be opening. Yeah. And then through that, as he sacrificed on the cross, then he could also experience the resurrection by God. Yeah. So Jesus' life had two aspects, cross and resurrection. Sacrificing, but resurrection in God. He resurrected in God. So that's how Jesus' life was. Cross and resurrection. Suffering, sacrifice, the great sacrifice, but then he could revive in God. And then he could reveal the great glory of God. He could fulfill the great will of God in this world. So our life of faith, it can be similar. If we try to follow this life of Jesus, then we need to know that then even if we really, if we are the true Christian, it means if we are really trying to follow, follow God, follow God's guidance, follow the life of Jesus, then even our life can be, yeah, we can be sacrificed. We need to be sacrificing a lot. We need to be suffering. The suffering can follow us. Many tribulations or persecutions can follow us. So when the persecutions are coming to us, then don't be misunderstanding. Uh, the persecutions can follow us as we are trying to live following the life of Jesus, as we are trying to live the true life in God. But then, and we can have the hope in God. So don't be discouraged by it. Uh, as we are suffering, but we would not die miserably. But through our suffering life, then the will, the, the great will of God can be realized through our life. And then we can come close to God. We can, we can be resembling Jesus Christ, who suffered, but who didn't lose the faith. But he overcame all the sufferings with faith in God. And then through this life of suffering, through this life of Jesus Christ, the sacrificial life, then the great will of God could be realized. So the same for our life of faith, maybe we can be suffering, we can maybe many persecutions <laughs> or many, uh, many hardships can be overflowing in our life. But then if we don't lose the faith, if we don't give up, then uh, even the, the, the great will of God can be fulfilled through our life of faith. So uh, we want to like, we want to live with this recognition for our life. So today we are looking at Second Corinthians chapter four. Is this one? It's about this one. Gospel. The light, the light of God could be sh shown unto us. Shine, shown, shown, right? <laughs> the light of God was shined to us. The light of God. So, we are the one who received this light of God. And who could see God? Who could see the image of God? So then, don't be discouraged. Because we can go, we can receive the way to God. We can receive the way for our salvation. Second Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1. 
Second Corinthians chapter 4 from verse, from verse 1. Children, you can listen to the word of God. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. So by God's love and mercy, then we could be accepted by God. Then we could receive this commission from God for our life. So don't lose the heart. Take heart. Verse 2. Rather, we have renounced the secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God on the contrary. By setting forth the, the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. So, rather, we, as we receive this the commission, precious commission for our life, then we renounced, we deserted the secret, the, the sinful ways of our life. Huh? The, the secret, shameful ways. Huh? So we don't distort, we don't do strange things. Huh? We don't distort the word of God. We don't, we don't deceive. We do not use deception. But on the contrary, uh, Plainly, we we setting forth the truth, the truth. We preach the gospel. We treat, we preach the true gospel. Plainly, to this world. So we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. So that even we can recommend ourselves before God. Verse three. <clears throat> And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that display, displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So here we can find that then children, you listen to the word of God, children, children. When you come to church, then you need to listen to the word of God. You came to church? Hmm. Then you need to listen. Okay? So here, <clears throat> verse 3 and 4, it, taught, it, it explains about it. The, the, the mystery of the non-believers on faith. <laughs> Why the non-believers they don't believe in Jesus Christ. Huh? Why don't they believe in Jesus? The non-believers? Hmm? Verse 3 and 4 is explaining about it. Even if our gospel is veiled, covered, it is veiled, it is covered to those who are perishing. Yeah, the gospel is covered. They cannot find, they cannot listen, they don't listen to the word of the, the gospel. Because it's like the gospel is covered to them. They cannot recognize the gospel is the truth. Why? Verse 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Yeah. The God of this age, the idols, the gods. The gods in this world, they blinded the minds of the non-believers. That's why, even though or oh, oh, many times they listen to the word of God, they listen to the Bible, but then they don't really believe that. They don't believe that Jesus is our Savior. They don't believe. They don't want to believe because of the God of this world. They believe something else in this world. Hmm? They believe something else. So the God of this age, the God of this world covered the, 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 the eyes of the non-believers. So that is the issue. That is the problem. So that's why we need to let them know God very clearly, deeply, correctly. Huh? So we need to deliver this true word of God. 
But even though we try to do, we try to deliver this word of God, but if they don't least want to listen, then eh, they will be responsible for their own life. They will be responsible for their own um, fate. But anyway, we as the believer of God, we as the servants of God, the children of God, <coughs> we need to go out to the world. We need to deliver the message of God who was blind, who is blinding God, who are covered by the, by the, by the spirit of the world. The God of this age, the God of this age, the God of this world, the idols, huh? the evil spirits, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Yeah, they, don't, they believe in something else. They believe in the power of money. They believe in the power of the world. They believe in something else. But they don't believe that they, ah, Jesus has the power to save my life. Why? They are deceived by many other, many other things in this world. Many other uh, spirits. They are covered with all those. So, <clears throat> then how can they be saved? That's why they need to be humble. Then when the gospel is, is reached to them, then they need to open their eyes. They need to open their heart. They need to accept the word of God with a pure faith, with a humble heart. And then they can, be, they can receive the salvation for their life. They need to open their eyes with a humble heart. Children, children, children. When you come, then you need to listen to the word. Of, when you come to church, you need to listen to the word of God. Okay? Hmm? So, the God of this age covered their eyes. The blinded, the God of... So even the same, it can be the same. We should not be controlled by the temptations. That is the God of this age. It, even it can cover our eyes. <laughs> temptations, evil spirits, uh, and those, those many things. The, 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 the desires of this world, uh, the desires of the, the sins. Ah, I want to do this one, I want to follow that one. Those can blind us. Huh? Those can blind us. So the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So we ourselves need to be need to be careful. <laughs> we ourselves need to be careful. We need to uncover our eyes from that, from the cause of this age, huh? from the evil spirit from the sinful desires. We need to open our eyes. We need to uncover our eyes. The God of this age has blinded because they, has, they have blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of gospel that displays the glory of Christ. And so then, because they are covered, then they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So they cannot see Jesus Christ clearly, correctly. So that's why we need, that's why we need to teach the people well. <laughs> that's why they need to listen to the word of God and they need to open their heart. They need to believe the word of God. Verse 5. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Hmm. So that's what we should preach. We should preach, we should not preach ourselves. That's what we need to be careful. We should not preach ourselves. We preach, 
We will be priests is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as our Lord, as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus Christ. So that's what we should be careful. We should not teach our, about ourselves. We should teach about Jesus Christ. We should not glorify ourselves, but then we should glorify God, like the, the, believe, like the disciples of Jesus. They were not glorifying themselves, but then they were trying to glorify God for all their life. They were trying to deliver the message of Jesus Christ, the message of God for their life. They were not delivering their own message from their own knowledge. The same for our life of faith. We should deliver the message of God. We should not deliver our own logics, our own thought. We should deliver the message of God, Jesus Christ. We should, we should let people know the Jesus Christ as our Lord. But then we need to also let them know how you are sinful. But Jesus saved us. How you are sinful. Like, ah, Peter denied Jesus three times. Peter, he was not trying to... Huh? trying to hide it, <laughs> you know? The same, Mark. Mark, he ran away when Jesus was caught. He didn't try to hide it, but he revealed it, how he was simple like that. But then even this, yeah, this sinner, this ugly guy, huh? Jesus came to me again, to save me again. Huh? So the Bible is very true, the Bible. The word of God in the Bible, that is very true. It does, it's not hypocrite. And also it's showing the sinfulness of the people. But then, even, even it is showing that then the great love of God, the great love of Jesus Christ to save each one of us, it could be shown, it could be displayed in this word of God. That's how we should also live. So even yesterday, I, talk, I thought about it, Paul. Paul was the same. <clears throat> In the book of Acts, chapter 7 and 8, we can see the stories of souls persecuting the church, right? Yeah. Saul was really persecuting the church very ugly. Yeah. It was very ugly. Even Saul was also advocating or supporting the people who are killing Stephen. So Saul was there at that place. Saul was supporting those who are killing Stephen. Even Saul was going to seize many Christians in Damascus. Saul was that bad guy against the kingdom of God. But then Jesus called him from heaven. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting? me. Then Saul asked, who are you? I am Jesus who, whom you are persecuting. So through that then, Saul was called by Jesus. And then Saul could realize that then, even Jesus forgave all his sins. And then he could start the new life in God from that time. But then what I'm trying to say is this one. Still, Saul could be the great apostle later, right? But then even the stories of souls persecuting the Christians, even it's recorded in the Bible. Do you understand what I mean? The book of, at the book of Acts, souls, the story of souls persecuting the church, very ugly image of Saul. Very bad guy against the Christians. Then, but even the story of that, the ugly stories of Saul is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 7 and 8. Saul persecuting the church, Saul killing Stephen. But then who wrote the book of Luke? The book of Acts? Luke. Luke. Who was Luke? Luke was the disciple of Luke, a disciple of Paul, Saul. Actually, Paul, 
you know, even as you, as you look at the, the movie, then you can find it then. Lu was the one who listened to Saul, Paul. And then Lu was the one who was writing, who was recording everything, listening to Paul. <laughs> so it means Saul was even saying he had a bad image before he was saved. And then Saul, Saul let Luke even record the bad image of Saul. Do you understand? Yeah. That's how Saul was. Uh, Saul, Paul, Paul, or Paul guided Luke to record how Saul was very bad before he met Jesus. <laughs> but then even this bad guy, me, ah, Jesus forgave all my sins. And then Jesus saved me. And Jesus changed my life. How great it is. How graceful it is. How great grace God gave me for my new life. This is what Paul was trying to show through the word of God, through his word in the Bible. Acts. Paul was not trying to hide himself. Paul was not trying to show his own goodness. Ah, I'm a very good guy. I'm a very good, great servant of God. I'm preaching the, the gospel so well. But then he didn't try to hide the bad things, what he did before. <laughs> but then even, even though he was doing the very bad things, ugly things against God, against Jesus, but then he was also <coughs> guiding Luke to record even the bad things, bad history of Paul. That's how I was so bad. But then even Jesus forgave all my sins. And then Jesus, God accepted me, this sinner. This is recorded in the Bible. What does it mean? Yeah. Saul was very true. Paul was very, very true. Very, very innocent before God. Very pure before God. <coughs> and then Paul was not trying to, was not trying to <laughs> glorify himself. But then Paul was trying to glorify God for all his life. He was, Paul was trying to glorify the name of Jesus Christ in this world. For our life of faith, the same. We should not try to deliver our own message, my own life. Hey, we can give the testimony, right, about my life. But then we should deliver the message of Jesus Christ. We should deliver the grace of God for my, how God gave me, take such grace of God for my life. We need to <laughs> deliver <laughs> this news. We need to <coughs> give the glory of God, glory to God, to our <coughs> life. So we should not preach ourselves. Before we, verse 5, we preach, what we preach is not ourselves. Yeah, we should not preach ourselves. We should not glorify ourselves. But then we should preach Jesus Christ as our Lord. Even though I was a great sinner, but ah, Jesus said, Jesus forgave all my sins. And then now I could, now I can stand, I can stand before you. Now I'm living the new life. How graceful it is. That's how God is so great. Even God changed my life. God saved me from the dark life in this world. That's what we need to, that's how we need to give the testimony to the people. That's how, that's what we should deliver to the people. Ah, this Jesus Christ changed my life. This Jesus Christ saved my life. He gave me, God gave me the new life. That's what we should preach in the world. Are you listening? <laughs> Are you boring? <laughs> okay. So we are almost. Hmm? Almost. So what we preach, verse 5, what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. 
and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. So we are working for the kingdom of God. It's the servants of God, or it's the children of God. Verse 6. <clears throat> for God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. So, as God gave us the light, right? Let light. Where is it? Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, right? The first creation was the light, the creation of the light. Let there be light. Hmm? Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Before God created all other things in this world, in this universe, but what did God create first? Light. God, sh shown, God has shown the light to this world. It is the starting of creation of this world. So, this light, light is important. You are in the darkness. Before we met Jesus Christ, then we could be in the darkness. But then, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light, another light. <laughs> what, what kind of light is it? Made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. So God gave us this new light for our life, the light of knowledge of knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ. That can be the light for our life. To know God, to know Jesus Christ. So even yesterday we looked at right John chapter 17, verse what? <clears throat> what is the light? Huh? Well, what is uh, also life? It's the it is talking about life, <coughs> eternal life. <coughs> John chapter 17, verse 3. <clears throat> John chapter 17, verse 3. Now, this is eternal life. This is eternal life. What is eternal life? That they know you. Who is you? God. Huh? They know you. Who are they? The disciples of Jesus. Huh? They know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is eternal life. What is eternal life? This is eternal life. They know you. They know God. They know God, the true God. And who? Two things. They know two things. Two beings. Who do they know it? Who do they know? They know, they know you. They know the, the only true God. And they know Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to this world. They know God and they know Jesus Christ. So this is eternal life. To know God, to know Jesus Christ. As you know God, as you know Jesus Christ, we can receive the eternal life. That's how yesterday this word is defining. This is eternal life. To know the true God, not other God, the true God, to, to, to know the true God and Jesus Christ as our Savior, as our Lord. This is eternal life. That's why it's important to know God, to know God, and <laughs> to make Him known. To know God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and to make Him known. So we go back Second Corinthians chapter 4. This is it. And then this is also light. The light of God is there. Where? In the face of Jesus Christ. When we, know, when we meet Jesus Christ, 
the new light can come to our life. Before then, maybe the darkness could be controlling our life. We could be always gloomy or confusing. The confusions were controlling our life or the sins were controlling our life. We were always like tempted by many sins. <laughs> you know, many people are living in the sins, darkness, confusions. But then when you know God, when you know Jesus Christ, when you meet them, then the light, the new light can come to our life. And we can receive the new life, eternal life by God, by the great mercy of God for our life. The light of God and the life of God. The light of God, we can receive the light of God for our life. And then verse 7, verse 7, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Yeah, we have this treasure in jars of clay. In jars of clay, we are the jars of clay. But then we have this treasure of God in us. Then we can be also very precious in God. Verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry in. So that's how we are, our life can be. We look to be like beaten a lot, we've been, been uh, discouraged, uh, being persecuted and <clears throat> crushed away, crashed, and then persecuted a lot, and perplexed, hard-pressed. Our life can be full of like these sufferings, hardships can be following us. But then, we don't, we don't be just destroyed. We don't just struck down and we cannot, can't we get up? We always get up. <laughs> Even though we are destroyed, even though we are going through very great hardships, but we don't die. We don't die with the hardship. We can rise up again, again and again. That's how our life of faith is. That's how we can receive the resurrection. We can experience the resurrection in God every day, reviving in God. Even though we can fall today, but we can rise up again. As long as we don't give up on our life. <laughs> you know, as long as we don't give up on, on our life, God will revive us. Even we can revive ourselves with faith in God, with courage, with hope in God. We can revive. We don't die miserably. Don't worry. We don't die miserably. So verse 16, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. Yeah, it looked to be like as we are following the life of Jesus, then our life can be full of like sufferings, and it's like we are we are going to die. Huh? We carry we carry around in our body <laughs> the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may may also be revealed in our body. But even though we go through these great hardships for today, but then. Even we can, but if we can overcome with the faith, then even we can experience the resurrection in God. Hmm? Do you understand? As after we overcome it. Ah, still tomorrow morning maybe the great blessings can come to me. As we go through, went through well with the faith, all these hardships. Like Job's life. You remember Job's life? Yeah. Without reason, Job was really <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> suffering a lot. <coughs> but then, <coughs> after he really <laughs> overcame all the things with the faith, then he could receive greater blessings. He could meet more deeply for his life. So today, maybe we can go through the cross, but then maybe tomorrow, we can experience the great resurrection in God. We can be experiencing living like Jesus Christ. 
So we always, for instance, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. So that, so as we go through the cross, then we can also experience the resurrection. But if we don't know the cross, then our life can be very shallow. <laughs> oh, very shallow. But as we go through the resurrection, then we can meet God more deeply, experience God more deeply. Even we will be able to experience the resurrection in God. It's somehow difficult, right? But then <laughs> try to listen well. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body after we went through the cross, the hardships. Verse 11, for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that this life may also be revealed in our <coughs> mortal body. So it's the same. Now, as we are going through, as we are like thrown into this sinful world, suffering world, but then through that, this life, this the new life, maybe the life in God, maybe also revealed in our physical body, in our physical body. Even as we are living with this physical body, we can experience the resurrection in God, the great resurrection. Verse 12, so then death is ad hoc in us, but life is ad hoc in you. So that as we are suffering to deliver the message of God to you, then maybe we can be, we can be going through the death, the process of death, great suffering. But then through our suffering, sacrificial life, you will receive the new life. You will be saved. So the death is, death, the death is ad hoc in us, but the life is in you. That's how we can explain. So anyway, today, <clears throat> as we meditate this word of God, we can realize that how Paul was passionate to deliver the message of God. And how Paul was living, how Paul overcame all the difficulties for his life in God. And even though he was really persecuted a lot and suffering, going through the great sufferings, but then when he didn't lose the faith, then but even through the sufferings, with the faith, then he, he could overcome everything. And then with the faith, then maybe even the sufferings could be helping him to experience Jesus Christ deeply. Uh, so even maybe he was loving the suffering, even though it was really difficult. But then through the sufferings, he could also experience the pain of Jesus for this world, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And then he could also experience the resurrection in God, cross and resurrection. Hmm. So as your Paul, as your Apostle Paul continued to live with faith to the end of his life, and then as he could experience Jesus Christ deeply for his life, the same, we also want to continue to live following the life of Jesus. But then yeah, we need to remember that then the, the end of our, our life, we, we, are, we, the, we, we would not be ending miserably. The hope, the hope, the revival, the resurrection, the resurrection is in us, before us. So we want to remember this, as we remember this, that as we continue to live with faith continually, so that we want to overcome everything for our life. And then we want to experience Jesus deeply, and then even our life can be also, through our life, then even the new life, the new life can come to this world. Even the light of God can be shining to this world through our life of faith. So we want to end here. Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us this time to meditate your word. As Paul, uh, even though he was a great sinner, but then Jesus, when Jesus was calling him, then Jesus forgave all his sins, and then Jesus accepted him, and then Jesus gave him the new commission to deliver this the true gospel of God for this world. 
So then, Apostle Paul, he always remembered this great grace of God, this great forgiveness of God for his life. And then he started the new life in God to reach faith. So even though he was suffering a lot, he was going through the great hardships for his life. But then always he remembered the great grace of God. And then he overcame everything with his faith toward God. And then he continued his mission, the life of mission for all his life, overcoming all the difficulties. So then through this life of Apostle Paul, then your precious word could be delivered to this world. And then Paul himself, he could also experience Jesus' sacrifice. Even he could experience Jesus' resurrection for his life. So as we are living, also following, trying to follow the life of Jesus, then even, even though we can be suffering, we can be going through the great hardships for our life. But then as we continue this life of faith, commission, this life of commission, continually with faith, then we want to overcome all the difficulties for our life with faith, with the Spirit of God. And then we also want to experience the resurrection every day for our life. So then uh, we can be really resembling Jesus Christ. We can be also growing in God continually. So then our life can be revealing the glory of God through our life of faith. So thank you for all your grace through this time. Then I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank mm -hmm. you.